the general of the independent police, of the independent office for police conduct of others. For the reasons given in the judgment that we have handed down today, this appeal uh, will be allowed. Uh, what I propose to do now is to read out a summary of the judgment for the information of the public and the press. Uh, it should be noted, however, that the judgment itself is definitive and that what I read out by way of summary is simply for information. On the 11th of December 2015, armed police officer W80 shot Mr. Jermaine Baker dead in circumstances described in the judgment of the Divisional Court. The Independent Office for Police Conduct investigated Mr. Baker's death and recommended that disciplinary proceedings for gross misconduct in using excessive force should be brought against W80. The IOPC concluded that a misconduct hearing would be likely to find that W80's belief that he was in imminent danger was honestly held. The IOPC thought, however, that the panel at a misconduct hearing could determine that his honest but mistaken belief that his life was threatened was unreasonable. The Commissioner of Police of the Metropolis disagreed with the legal premise on which the IOPC had based its conclusion, and she decided not to follow the IOPC's recommendation. The IOPC then directed the Commissioner to bring disciplinary proceedings against W80. W80 brought this case for judicial review of that decision by the Divisional Court. The Divisional Court quashed the IOPC's decision, holding that in applying the objective civil law test in determining that there was a case to answer, the IOPC applied the wrong test. It should, they said, have applied the criminal law test. The Court of Appeal has decided, after a three-day hearing, that the question depended on the proper meaning of the applicable statutory conduct standard and the Code of Ethics published by the College of Policing. That conduct standard was that officers should only use force to the extent that it was necessary, proportionate and reasonable in the circumstances. The Code of Ethics provided that officers had to, quote, account for any use of force, in other words, justify it, based upon their honestly held belief at the time that they used the force, close quote. The IOPC and Ms. Dimitriou, representing Mr. Baker's family, contended before the Court of Appeal that the words of the conduct standard and of the code of ethics were clear. If officers held an honest but mistaken belief as to the danger faced, a misconduct hearing would only find them to be guilty of misconduct if their mistaken belief was unreasonable in all the circumstances. And the code merely explained that officers must, after force has been used, account for or justify its use based upon their honestly held belief at the time. W80, the Commissioner, the National Police Chiefs Council and the Divisional Court all took a different view. 
they regarded the Code of Ethics as providing a clear pointer to the application of the criminal law test for self-defense. They submitted that an officer would only be guilty of misconduct in the circumstances of this case if his belief that he was in imminent danger was not an honestly held one, or if he'd used more than the minimum amount of force necessary. They argued that once it was determined that the officer held an honest belief that he was in imminent danger, there could be no inquiry in misconduct proceedings as to whether that belief was a reasonable one to have held in all the circumstances. Thus, they argued, that once the Director of Public Prosecution had decided, as she had, not to prosecute W80, there was no possibility of misconduct proceedings being successful. The Court of Appeal, therefore, decided, had to decide whether the Divisional Court was right to quash the IOPC's decision. The question was whether or not the IOPC was justified in concluding that on the basis of the applicable conduct standard and the provisions of the Code of Ethics, it was open to a reasonable panel at a misconduct hearing to make a finding of misconduct if W80's honest but mistaken belief that his life was threatened was found to be unreasonable. The IOPC submitted that this conclusion was soundly based in law. W80 submitted that it was not. The decision of the court. That the standards of professional behavior required of police officers are statutory. And that standard is elaborated upon and explained by the code. But the code cannot alter the standard itself. The question was not whether the standard, as explained by the code, was more consistent with either the civil or the criminal test for self-defense. The meaning of the standard was not to be judged by specific reference to the facts of this case. There were a multitude of situations to which the standard applied, such as where force of any kind was used, for example, in arresting citizens, restraining them, and taking them into custody. It was wrong to say that there could be no misconduct wherever an officer used proportionate force based on an honest belief that he was in danger. If the officer made an honest mistake, the disciplinary panel must still determine whether the use of force was reasonable in all the circumstances. In many cases, an honest mistake is also likely to be found to have been reasonable in all the circumstances. But there will be some cases where it will not. It was not the Court of Appeals' task to speculate on the numerous different situations that might occur in practice. The Code of Ethics itself was deliberately written in plain language and was specifically intended for the use of police officers, staff, contractors and the public. It would be wrong to introduce a technical meaning which was not apparent on the face of the Code of Ethics. Neither the relevant regulations, the Home Office guidance, nor the Code of Ethics made express reference to the criminal test for self-defence. It would, therefore, be inappropriate to read such a test into a simply drafted and readily comprehensible standard without clear words. The public would reasonably expect the standards of conduct to apply without any gloss. Moreover, W80's submissions would prevent public scrutiny of the serious situation that arose in this case. 
the investigation by the IOPC had been privately undertaken, whereas a misconduct hearing would be conducted in public. The suggestion that the conclusion was unfair because W80's training had been conducted on the basis that the criminal test for self-defence would apply in misconduct hearings could be made in mitigation if that became necessary. So our conclusions are that the Court of Appeal held that the Divisional Court was wrong to quash the IOPC's decision. The IOPC was justified in concluding that it was open to a reasonable misconduct panel to make a finding of misconduct if W80's honest but mistaken belief that his life was threatened was found to be unreasonable. And that conclusion was soundly based in law on the proper and plain meaning of the relevant regulations and the code of ethics. Accordingly, the appeal was allowed and the IOPC's decision to direct the Commissioner to bring disciplinary proceedings against WAT would stand. That concludes the summary. Uh, the parties have submitted an agreed order for the Court to make, but they have asked for seven days in which to consider uh, whether to apply for permission to appeal the Court of Appeals decision to the Supreme Court. We will grant them seven days for that purpose and we will only draw the order when we have heard and determined any application, if it is made, for permission to appeal to the Supreme Court. That concludes today's hearing.